Arm drag. Rep screwed rep. I'm Who are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Because this guy's a serious professional. Rep screwed rep. Ball two on bar. Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helpson. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your hat. I hate your t shirts. I hate your wristbands. I hate your shoes. I hate your music. I hate the C-Nation. I hate everything that you stand for. So does rule. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Hole three. The Moss Hubbard three-handle family gradunzo. Live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., this is the RCWR Show with your host, Lee Sanders. And a very good Tuesday night to you all. This is the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders, coming at you live right now on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show and over at our sister website at infinityoneproductions.com. You're checking out an all-new episode of our Tuesday Night Wrestling Report edition of the RCWR show coming at you right now on September 25th, 2012. What's up, everybody? Black Avenger over here. You know, we were on a couple of hours there of a break. We came on back. Definitely a lot of good things was happening in the sport of wrestling. In case you might have missed it, of course, we're definitely going to do our best to get you guys caught up on what all you might have missed from Monday night as we had a pretty solid episode of WWE Raw. I hope you do, all of you. I hope you do and you did and all that good stuff. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. It's starting to get a little bit chilly over here on the East Coast. I see a couple of people, a lot of people actually, are starting to bundle up. Looks like old man winter is just creeping just around the corner. Hope you all are getting ready. It's almost time to th- turn those thermostats on. I know I had my heater pumping actually all this weekend past couple of nights it's been dipping down into the 40s over here but let me get off of that subject because the last thing i want to do is sound like a damn meteorologist anyway you know how we do it over here on the rcwr show we got the chat room it's open it's loaded up right now feel free to jump on in there definitely love to hear from you guys we also have the twitter you know you can hit us up on there we're at infinity one prod we're also on facebook at infinity one productions.com And we are going to be opening up the phone lines in the later part of the show. So be sure you listen now for when we give that phone number. Make sure that you're able to seize your opportunity and be heard live on the air, as we definitely want to hear from you all as far as what did you think of Raw this past Monday night. You know, before we dip right into it, we definitely want to just take this time out to thank those of you. A very, very humble thank you to the listeners for checking out the Weekend Report edition of the RCWR show this Saturday. As as long as we've been doing our Weekend Edition reports, and it actually hasn't even been that long. We've only done it for a couple of months. It's fairly still new. Y'all quickly made this past Saturday be our most listened and downloaded weekend edition report that we've done so far. So definitely y'all let your voices be heard loud and clear, and we definitely appreciate the love and the support. We're definitely going to keep bringing you more great content like that, and, you know, right after we come back from commercial break, we're definitely going to let you know what all we got in store for this coming Saturday's weekend edition, you definitely want to check that out. So we're going to be talking about what all had went down on Raw this past Monday night. We'll get you caught up on the latest and wrestling-related news, as it's actually been a pretty quiet week. Nothing really too major has happened other than WWE hooking up with Hulu. Definitely tell you guys more on that in a little bit. We're also going to tell you about a really badass contest 
that we are doing. Now, we made the announcement on Saturday, but just in case you might have missed it, don't worry. From here on out, up until our 100th episode landmark coming on October 23rd, we're going to be reminding you of this contest that we're going to be doing. And basically, it's a contest that gives you the opportunity to win a copy of a limited edition of WWE 13 for your respected platform. You definitely want to stick around and you want to make sure you listen to all the juicy details and be able to get yourself a copy of that game as we're going to be selecting one lucky winner. More details on that in just a little bit, folks. So let's go ahead and let's jump right on into it. So I was kicking back like many of you this past Monday Night Raw, and uh, I was saying to myself, man, aside from Raw this past Monday night, I'm also looking at the football. And, yeah, if you want to pick my brain on that, I know usually we don't really dive into sports like that, but I definitely follow football every Sunday, every Monday. I'm glued to the TV. I'm watching football. Sundays is just brutal because from 12 to 11, I'm watching my football, so I don't really like being disturbed. I definitely agree with a lot of you. I know I was interacting with uh, some of my friends on Twitter and Facebook, and, uh, yeah, I definitely couldn't agree more. We saw a pretty messed up week of bad calling, and it did not get any worse than what we had saw in that, what was it, the Green Bay Packers game versus the Seahawks this past Monday night. My God. Ay, 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 but that's an entirely different other topic. We'll probably dive more into that this Saturday. We're talking about what all went down on Raw as brilliantly, very cleverly, we saw WWE play off of the bad officiating that's been happening in the NFL as we kick things off with the WWE champion, CM Punk, with Paul Heyman. They're in the middle of the ring, and Paul Heyman, he is speaking on behalf of the WWE champion, talking about the travesty, talking about the great controversy that had happened the week prior where we had saw the team of Cena and Sheamus beat Punk and Alberto Del Rio. Who could forget about that controversial finish as we had saw CM Punk get that leg raised up on the ropes right before the count of three. But the referee, ah, young Maddox is his name, he did not see it, and he awarded the victory to Cena and Sheamus and Punk. He was just livid. He'd been fuming for a whole week just thinking about this. And we would hear Paul Heyman actually call out the referee Maddox to apologize, correct this wrong, and furthermore, turn in his resignation as a WWE official. Well, we would see Maddox come out, and he would, in fact, man up, and he'd say, yeah, I did mess up. It was my first match. It was a main event match. I definitely did not do a good job. I humbly apologize, but there's just no way I'm going to quit. And he would further try to explain how he was recruited by the Raw General Manager, A.J. Lee. And Paul Heyman, he is just having a field day with this young referee as He's telling him, you know, you might want to strongly reconsider what you're saying here. You definitely need to apologize to the WWE champion here. You definitely have no business being a referee. You need to resign. Well, Maddox, he would try to express how he felt, but we just saw a livid WWE champion just get all up in his face, throwing the insults out there. Wow. At the same time, insulting the Raw general manager, Miss A.J. Lee. And this would actually prompt A.J. Lee to come out. And yes, she was definitely not liking the fact that this referee had messed up. But she's also going to the face of CM Punk, trying to stand her ground and let him know, and Paul Heyman know, that she is not going to be disrespected on her show, 
and it was just one of those moments that you're looking at. If you're an A.J. Lee fan, you're kind of kicking back and you're saying to yourself, okay, well, it's kind of nice to see them try to make her be kind of relevant again because she had just came off a little bit ice cold ever since she had that confrontation with Vicky Guerrero. It just kind of seemed like maybe the writers didn't quite know what to do with her. So kind of looked like she was on the back burner there for a little bit, but we see her dive right back into it here with CM Punk. CM Punk playing all the right buttons of being that guy that you just have to boo, that you have to hate, as he just becomes very candid and very intimate with AJ Lee as he reveals how apparently these two were definitely very, very close as she was sending him all types of text messages photographs that basically are not suitable for the WWE network and its current TV PG rating. And we see CM Punk, he is really sinking down low, feeling as though AJ is just doing all of these things as a way of getting payback for CM Punk standing her up two months ago when she proposed to him. So AJ Lee, we just see her, she just really livid, she's just pretty upset, and she's not really sure what to do at this point. As from there, we see Paul Heyman, he is starting to take control of the situation here. He feels that the WWE champion is just going a little bit too far when he sits up very brilliantly here. He sits up, he gets on one knee, he proposes to AJ, telling her they could be a power couple, just like Hillary and Bill Clinton, just like Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. They could be that next power couple and rule the WWE, and it is a match made in heaven, or in this case, a match made in hell. And AJ, she would just cold slap Paul Heyman before storming out of the ring Definitely a very solid way to open up Raw. Definitely for three hours, that is. Strong way to open up the show. I was liking seeing all those people in the ring at the same time. Great chemistry between all of them. I didn't feel that AJ was overkill one bit. It was just the right amount of touch needed there. Definitely was liking how everybody was just able to walk away from that particular segment. Having that extra little bit of uh going into the rest of the night. And from there, we would actually see A.J. Lee in a backstage segment talking with the referee, Young Maddox, there. And basically lighting him up big time, telling him that she did not like feeling embarrassed. She didn't like the fact that she had to go out there and basically clean up his mess. She was really chewing into this guy really good. And then all of a sudden, she just entered a trance moment as we just saw young Maddox continue to apologize. And eventually, he just walked off. AJ, she's still in that trance. We don't know what the heck was going on right there. I don't know what she was thinking about. She looked like she might have been thinking about a Klondike bar. I don't know. But anyway, that's just what had happened right there. Of course, one of the best things I had liked about that segment I love how Paul Heyman had bust out that little, I I can only describe it. I used to know the name of it. It's amazing because I guess because I personally don't use it. I guess that's why I don't know the name of it. But the little thing that you put over your eyes when you're trying to sleep at night. You all know what I'm talking about if you saw Raw. I love how Paul Heyman had bust that out and you had the NFL logo on one side and the WWE on the other side. They hit it. Dead on the nail. I mean, you want to talk about the WWE refs just messing up matches. What a great way to play off of what all had been happening in the NFL within recent weeks. I was just really loving that little little subliminal touch right there. Definitely the right little mm, slap to the face of NFL. Of course, one of the other key highlights that we had saw from Raw this past Monday night was the awesome segment that we just kept revisiting throughout the night, revolving around Kane and Daniel Bryan 
as they're trying to get through their next little hurdle to basically become closer to one another to really come off as a better tag team. And we just see these two guys with Dr. Shelby at a diner. And this was probably one of the greatest moments I loved. I'm always amazed when I see Kane and Daniel Bryan each week, because I'm always saying to myself, my God, these segments are so hilarious. How are they going to top this next week? I always ask myself that. And this past Monday night was definitely not a disappointment. I mean, just to see Kane in an apron and saying that his name was, I believe, um, Jacob or Darren, whatever the hell his name was. I know one person said, wait a minute, his name is Glenn. Why isn't he going by the name Glenn? That's his real name. Who cares? Just the fact that he was coming out there dressed as a waiter and trying to take Dr. Shelby and Daniel Bryan's order, that was just freaking hilarious right there. And, of course, as I said, we just kept seeing them throughout the night as this was basically a opportunity of role-playing here. And I loved how Kane sat up and told Daniel Bryan how he had a problem with one of his coworkers, the cook, and he just could not stand him to the point that he grabbed him by his goat face beard, dunked him in a deep fryer, and then basically took a butcher knife and chopped up that fried beard and sprinkled it into everybody's food. And who could forget the look on that old lady's face as she had heard that? That was just really priceless right there. Definitely a solid night for Kane, Daniel Bryan. If you're a Kane, Daniel Bryan fan, this was definitely a very awesome moment right here. And I was just loving how the one key moment here that really just had me go, wow, really, was seeing Kane eat a plate of lettuce and seeing Daniel Bryan eat a meatball from a big old plate of spaghetti and meatballs. And I know exactly what you guys are saying. Was that really a meatball? Was it ground turkey? What the heck was it? Hey, hey, it looked like real meat to me. I would be shocked if that was something entirely different and just in case you guys aren't aware Daniel Bryan he is eating meat now okay I know that might come as a shock to some of you guys but he is eating meat and he's just not going overkill about it it turns out yes he has in fact been a vegan for many many years but one of the main problems that he's been experiencing within uh, recent years is he's been getting sick a lot, especially on the road. And it turns out all he's really putting into his body is soy. And he was talking about how when you're a vegan, pretty much your choices are very, very limited. So he uh, said that um, one of the times that he had got sick, he had got some tests done, and the doctors, for the love of them, they couldn't quite figure out what exactly was going on with him. Eventually, they were able to figure out that he wasn't really getting the type of protein necessary from meat. So they had told him, you know, hey, time to time, try to eat some meat, get some protein up in you. So he does eat meat, but he just doesn't go overkill like that. He uses it sparingly. He primarily tries to eat eggs, stuff like that to build up that protein and all that. So that's why you saw him eat that meatball. I know some of you were probably freaked out wondering, what the hell is going on here with this guy? So just just chill knowing that he's actually been eating meat off and on for a while now. But I just thought that was a pretty damn awesome segment as later on in the night we saw Kane, Daniel Bryan, They came out, and they came out because they needed to know from the WWE Universe what new tag team name was going to be chosen for them as it was another edition of Raw Active. Definitely a very solid episode right here. This was an awesome segment, and if I'm not mistaken, I know one of the names was Team Friendship. I think one of the other names was Team Hell No. I have no idea what the hell the other pick was, but I was just looking at Team Hell No, and I'm saying to myself, okay, just to be able to get away saying that on a TV 
rated PG show just to say Team Hell No. I'm sold on that. Team Hell No, that's the winner. I don't care. Make that the winner. Sure enough, Team Hell No was the winner. Really? That was the name of it? Team Teamwork? Teamwork. Team Go Face? I like Team Go Face too, guys. I'm looking at what you guys are saying in the chat room. So it was Team Team Teamwork. I am so glad that was not chosen because that just sounds really redundant, really stupid. Um, but yeah, so Team Hell No was the new selection. And from there, we don't even get to see Kane and Daniel Bryan get to celebrate the new name that long as they kind of look like they like the name. But then from out of nowhere, guess what? We see Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes attack the tag team champions, and they would quickly take off to the ramp. And Cody Rhodes cut one very awesome but brief promo saying to the tag champions, you want to talk about tag team names? Well, get a look at Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes. Together, we are Road Scholars. And I was just looking at that, and I'm kicking back, and I'm saying to myself, okay, okay, I'm feeling that. Okay, you guys got that. All right, Road Scholars. I like that. And just right there, I'm just reminded of what all we had saw on Friday Night SmackDown last week. And if you guys did not see that, I can't stress it enough, go hop on YouTube. Even though it was a little bit overkill with Daniel Bryan and Kane, it was still a very solid episode, especially towards the end when they were just going all hell balls out on all the tag team participants that were there. It was a tag team Tag Lumberjack match. I know that sounds really crazy. you got to watch it to believe it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, they were able to pull off a tag team match and a tag team Lumberjack match. Yes, it's crazy. I know, but it actually happened. Don't ask me how. Just go look it up. But that was a great moment. And when I'm seeing that moment, I'm actually having that moment in my head as I'm seeing Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow. They're cutting their promo on the tag team champions. And I'm just reminded of, wow, the tag division is just really coming along great. I'm really loving this right now. And it actually had me kick back and say to myself, just who exactly do we all have again in the tag team division? Now, just in case you all need your memory jogged up a little bit, okay? This is who we got so far. We got Santino Morella, Zack Ryder. We got the Usos, Jay and Jimmy Uso. We got the primetime players, Darren Young, Titus O'Neil. We got Justin Gabriel, Tyson Kidd. We got Epico, Primo. We got the newly formed Mysterio and San Cara. Now we got Damian Sandow teaming up with Cody Rhodes. I, I, I don't think I'm missing any names. You guys in the chat room, if I'm missing any tag names here, let me know. Uh, but, I mean, that's seven freaking tag teams. Right there. I mean, the tag division is really starting to build up so freaking good. And to just think that we have Daniel Bryan and Kane at the centerpiece of it all, this is really building up very nicely. It's just falling perfectly into peace, uh, in the place right now. It, it goes into what I had said several weeks ago when I saw the early signs that Kane and Daniel Bryan might possibly be teamed up. I said, you know what, if they do this right, Triple H, he can definitely use Kane Daniel Bryan as that step that he needs to try to make the tag team division be relevant again. And I just love how this tag division is really starting to take shape. I don't know about a lot of you guys, but for you guys that remember the Attitude Era or remember watching – WWE, WWF back in the 80s. I'm sure you guys can definitely appreciate this new revitalization in the tag division. It's actually exciting again to check out the tag division. And although it was a bit overkill on SmackDown last week, this week I loved how they just sparingly kind of scaled back a little bit on Kane and Daniel Bryan. It was just the right amount that we needed. That's exactly the amount that they need to have continuing on to SmackDown. I don't ever want to see Kane and Daniel Bryan take up that much of a two-hour show. as That's just going to be too much over 
kill, and it could possibly backfire in a way that the fans might not like seeing these guys together anymore, and it's kind of like, ah, it's being rammed down our throat. Get on with it already. Other key highlight that we had saw on Raw this past Monday night was a very emotional, and if you didn't kind of get teary-eyed, I don't know what to tell you, but it was definitely an emotional moment, I felt, was seeing Jerry Lawler uh, via satellite, I believe it was, talking with Michael Cole. Michael Cole, I just love how he's just been just radiating of just good guy within recent weeks. I love this Michael Cole. I love the fact that WWE is just being very smart about this, and they are just doing their best to just let Michael Cole do his thing. And Michael Cole, and just overnight, really, he just became a freaking good guy, and he is just on everybody's good side right now. And I just think that that's just freaking amazing, as we just saw him have a heartfelt interview with Jerry Lawler. And, of course... The questions, it might have seemed a little bit, ah, we kind of know this already, but you couldn't really say too much. You couldn't really ask Jerry Lawler too many questions. I thought that the questions that was asked to Jerry Lawler was definitely right because I'm sure that, unfortunately, we probably have a lot of people that just really weren't really aware of what all had been going on with the king and Hey, it's better to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. And in this case, it was definitely nice hearing Jerry Lawler sit up and say that his recovery is doing pretty good and he is going to be coming back as soon as he gets clearance from his doctors. Hey, take all the time you need, Jerry, because, I mean, your chair is in very good hands. For another week in a row, folks, we had good old Jim Ross joining Michael Cole at commentating for the entire night, and I was just loving this. I don't know if you guys were kind of feeling your hair stick up on the back of your neck a little bit, but for me, it's taking me a while just to get used to Jim Ross here because I can just remember, like, within recent years, how many times Jim Ross would pop up on an episode of Raw, and he's calling a match, And then all of a sudden, he gets yanked off of the damn table. He gets put into some type of a bad scenario, and we don't see Jim Ross for the rest of the night. Or he gets put into some embarrassing segment, and then, again, Jim Ross is done for the night. I just kept waiting for somebody to come out and do something to Jim Ross. I was really happy just kicking back and just watching Jim Ross do his thing. I loved it. Great little throwback. Their chemistry just really seems to be working very well together. It just feels more natural now as opposed to how it was when Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler had, uh, not Jerry Lawler, but how Jim Ross and Michael Cole had teamed up just a few years prior where you could feel this forced hate and animosity that was coming from Michael Cole to Jim Ross as Michael Cole felt that it needed to be about him as he's the new voice of the WWE. It's nice seeing that whole my stick is bigger than yours just be tossed out the window there. Great moment right there. Of course, we also got to talk about some of the matches that had came about on Raw Monday night. Definitely was some pretty solid matches. Of course, I can't talk about some of the matches we saw without first bringing up that awesome match that we had saw between Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston. I was just on the edge of my seat watching this match. These two guys, they really had put it all out there, and it was just one of those type of matches where I'm kicking back and I'm saying to myself, yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I love the display that was just coming off of Kofi Kingston. I'm saying to myself, This is the type of energy, this is the type of enthusiasm that I need to see from Kofi Kingston, not just because he's working with Dolph Ziggler. This is the type 
of intensity I need to see from Kofi Kingston for all his matches. Dolph Ziggler, we all know, time and time again, he can get out there and he could put on a five-star quality match. He could probably go out there and wrestle with a damn broom, and he will make it look entertaining as hell. Kofi Kingston, he has his moments, and Monday night was definitely his moment. I just want to see that happen on a more consistent basis because i got to be honest with you, and I have been an advocate for Kofi Kingston for a long time. I look at him just like Shelton Benjamin. He's got all the tools necessary to be up there in the WWE Elite but he's just not willing, it seems, to take himself over that next hurdle. Well, you know, to be doing the whole tag team thing for all these years and all that, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but, you know, at some point or another, just to kind of go back to something Triple H used to be famous for saying years back, if you're not in the WWE to become the champion, then you have no business being in the company. I want to see Kofi Kingston go up to that next level. And that match that he had with Ziggler definitely was a good wake-up call, I feel. Hopefully, WWE management, they really looked at that match, and hopefully they are looking at Kofi Kingston in a different light right now because that was definitely one of the best highlights one of the best matches on Raw since it's been going three hours since July, I believe it was. Definitely one of the best matches so far since they've gone three hours. I love that so much. I would love to see some type of a feud build off for that, as I just think that would be really awesome. Let's see these two guys hook up again at Hell in a Cell. I think that would be a really great match right there. Of course, we also had saw the primetime players. Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, they had defeat the team of Ryder and Santino Morella. Also, we had saw Ryback continue his undefeated streak against Intercontinental Champion The Miz. Now, I was actually watching this match Monday night, and I know Zed was on Twitter and he was interacting with you all. And I know he was looking at this match, and he did not like the finish. And he had tried to explain the reason why he didn't like the match. And I know from some people, they were kind of saying to him, what are you talking about? This needed to be done to make Ryback look strong. And he was like, well, I am i don't know about that. I'm quite sure Lee would probably have booked this a little differently. And I told him, I said, yeah, I would have booked it differently. It's definitely a messed up opportunity on WWE's part right here. Now, now that we don't have to worry about 125 characters or less, let me really break down the reason why I feel WWE dropped the ball with Ryback. And I want you to bear this in mind. This isn't going to be the only time we're going to be – bringing up Ryback's name. Spoiler alert right here. Okay, here's the problem that I have with Ryback versus Miz. As we just saw Ryback get a clean finish pin off the Miz. Despite seeing two knuckleheads try to run into the ring, why, I don't know, but I'm glad they got stopped, stomped, and kicked out. I just think that's just silly. I think that... The wrestlers, they're doing enough as it is to really go out there, put their body on the line, and entertain for the fans. You're paying for your seats. That's all you're paying for. You're paying for that. You are paying for your food. You're paying for your clothes that WWE is selling in their little shop stores. That's pretty much it. Unless the fans are going to come into the crowd where you can touch them, I have always said this over the years, keep your ass in the seat and just root your favorite wrestlers on. I don't know, maybe these kids, they were just trying to get their little five seconds of fame, jump in the ring, maybe wave to the cameras, and who knows, but I don't know. In this day and age, it's just really crazy. Uh, I don't want to read too much into that, but I, I just always thought that was just silly. People just running into a damn ring, and they're very lucky because if Ryback would have got them, (laughs) 
Ryback would have killed those guys. I'm sorry. And, of course, I got a little sidetrack here, but I want to talk about this Ryback versus Miz. I was looking at this, and I'm saying to myself, okay, you know what? This is not how you do this, okay? We're talking about the Intercontinental Champion, the Miz, who has recently been a little bit on a losing streak. And it's almost getting to the point right now where it's like, okay, he just defended his championship at the last pay-per-view, and he did a pretty good job as he had defended it against three other people in a fatal four-way. Now we're seeing him on this losing streak, and then he loses cleanly to Ryback. I'm saying to myself, whoever did the WWE booking, they missed a huge opportunity right here because what should have ended up happening was we should have seen The Miz pull a gender mahal and basically go grab a microphone or go kick right back in the groin, something to basically get a disqualification. And then basically we could still see both of these two guys look somewhat strong and it could have been done in a way where Ryback, you know for certain he's not done with the Miz. He wants to get some type of payback on this guy at a later date. And we could have just maybe seen the match get rebooked again on the next episode of Raw. And it just could have been some type of a weird scenario where Miz is always trying to find some type of a way to get a DQ. That could have been the running gag until finally you have these two guys get it on at a pay-per-view. Hell, hell in a cell maybe, folks? That's what I was looking at right here. This win that Ryback had got, okay, it might help him out a little bit. But it did nothing for the Miz. And I'm like this, if Miz is going to be jobbing the people, then what's the point of him having the Intercontinental title? Let's just go on ahead and let's have that belt be taken off of him and put it on somebody else's shoulders. I mean, hell, this could have been done in a way where actually if WWE really wanted to jump out there, they could have sat up and said, you know what, the Intercontinental Championship it's going to be on the line at this pay-per-view or it's going to be on the line next week on Raw. And we just could have seen some type of a running gag continue to happen. I just don't like the way this was booked properly. I understand the big payoff that they were trying to go for as at the end of the night. Again, it would end on Ryback. Okay, but just seeing what had happened right there with Miz, I just am totally against that. And I know a lot of people were sitting up and they were saying, well, who could Ryback had faced to get a win off of? There are a ton of people, folks. If you want to just talk about folks that are added onto Ryback's record of people he's whooped, we could have pulled a Yoshitatsu we could have pulled a Justin Gabriel. We could have pulled a Ezekiel Jackson, who hasn't been doing a damn thing within recent months for the WWE. There is plenty of people that should have taken on Ryback. Hell, the primetime players, Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, one of them guys, they kind of need a little something to do. We could have seen one of them maybe try to do a little something with Ryback. Hell, they were in that YouTube pre-show for the pay-per-view United Champions a couple of weeks back where it was that whole battle royal thing so they kind of did double duty there you know what I'm saying this could have been the same case here for Ryback just the name of the game was just finding the right type of person he could face in the ring one of the other highlights that we had saw was Wade Barrett defeating Tyson Kidd, that was definitely a nice little outing right there. It was nice seeing both of these two go at it. Felt a little bad for Tyson Kidd. I'm still waiting for this guy to really just jump out there on the scene. I know he's going to have that breakthrough moment coming very, very shortly. But meantime, Wade Barrett, he just continues to look impressive since he's been back. Also, we had saw Sheamus team up with Rey Mysterio, Sankara, as they had defeated the team of Del Rio, Ricardo, 
and David Otunga. That was definitely a very solid match right there. And the answer to your question, Dave, in the chat room, Wade Barrett, why is he getting jobbers? Well, the guy's been gone for such a long period of time. We all might know who Wade Barrett is, but at the same time, it's a case right here where his stock needs to be built right back up again. As unfortunately, as much as I would like to see, and I'm definitely a Wade Barrett fan. I've, Like I said, I've been one of his main fans since I saw him come through NXT. I've been a supporter of his ever since. I don't really like the way Wade Barrett is just handling jobbers off the break. I'd like to see him be involved in a major program. Matter of fact, I said it a couple of weeks ago, hell, Wade Barrett, if he's ready, he actually needs to feud with Sheamus. That's actually something I'd like to see happen. But obviously, WWE, they have other plans right now. I'm hoping that maybe before this year is out, Wade Barrett will be back in the main event picture. If not, definitely sometime early next year, it would be nice to see him get back into that picture. But in the meantime, yeah, he's jobbing or he's taking on jobbers right now. But, hey, it is what it is. Just as long as he's out on TV and he's doing his thing, I don't care. I love watching the guy do his thing. Also, we had saw Brodus Clay. And uh looks like they was uh I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I believe it was Brodus Clay taking on Tensai. I was actually invested into this match. I first heard these two guys, I'm like, okay, two big bulls. Okay. We'll see what's gonna happen right here. I'm definitely curious. Let's see how this match is gonna play out. And then all of a sudden it was buzzkill for me as I had saw Well I I can't stand that damn song when I hear it, well, it's a big show, well, I, I can't stand that damn song. Big Show comes out, and he just gives a WMD to both of these guys, and that's pretty much it as the match ends in a no contest. I can't begin and believe how frustrated I was when I saw this. I, I just can't begin to tell you how upset I was when I saw this. I said, man... Do we really have to have this old guy, this old wrestler, come out and try to become relevant by bearing two younger guys? Is this really necessary? I am just so freaking tired of Big Show. I just want to see him just disappear and just never come back to the WWE. I am just so, so tired of this guy. I, I God... You know, now I'm saying to myself, okay, so what's possibly going to happen next? Are we going to see Big Show, Brodus Clay, Lord Tensai maybe in a triple threat match? I think that would kind of be moderately decent if it's handled right. If not, what the heck was the point of him coming out there and giving a WMD? And I'm like this, if that WMD is that damn powerful, then how come he isn't winning more matches? I don't understand that. If I had that serious of a punch, then I should be a Grand Slam champion within the same year while still holding on to all the titles. I mean, let's be for real right here. If Big Show's punch is that damn devastating, he should be holding on to every single championship belt right now. I just don't get this. It's freaking stupid. It makes no sense to me. I know they're trying to figure out how to utilize the big show, but this definitely, I feel, was not the right way to have Big Show come on in. Well, it beats having Big Show work a match with the great Kali. I guess I'll take that any day as watching those two guys wrestle. Whew, man. <laughs> yes, those two have wrestled before, and trust me, you don't want to see that match unless you want to be tortured. That's how bad that was. Oh, Lord. Also, we had saw probably one of my other favorite highlights of Raw this past Monday night, a very intense and emotional confrontation between Mick Foley, CM Punk. This was definitely a very solid segment right here where we had saw Mick Foley bring to the attention of the WWE Universe how he does not like this sudden change in CM Punk's demeanor and recalls the CM Punk that used to be 
the voice of the voiceless that used to believe in what's right and always trying to stand up to what was injustice. And Mick Foley's just really letting it all out with his words right here. As Mick Foley, as always, he's just proven time and time and time again that if you get him with the right type of wrestler, you get him on that right type of night, he can definitely bring to you a very memorable promo and this was definitely not a disappointment right here as we saw CM Punk he comes out and man probably the only other time I can recall seeing Mick Foley get owned on the mic was when Ric Flair I know you guys remember that and if you don't you want to go YouTube that was when Ric Flair and Mick Foley were going at it years back and Ric Flair was just owning him on the microphone there. And this right here, what I saw between CM Punk, Mick Foley, it just reminded me of that as CM Punk, he ridiculed Mick Foley for getting himself popular by jumping over roofs, putting his body through fire, thumbtacks, you name it, just basically calling him an idiot and saying that he doesn't need to do all of those things. He feels that he doesn't need to do those things because his words is his weapon, and it brings people to their knees. And he just really gave a really great solid promo right here. And we would hear CM Punk say to Mick Foley that at the end of the day, all that matters is that He's been the WWE champion for 309 days, and the next day it's going to be 310, and the next day after that it's going to be 311. Well, Mick Foley, he would counter back, and he would say 29. 29 would be the amount of days that Mick Foley has held the WWE championship total when you combine his three WWE title reigns. And he would say to him, you know what, the fans, they don't care about that because when it's all said and done, at the end of the day, I, the hardcore legend, have cemented my legacy in WWE history. You may have done what you needed to do, which was very questionable at Night of Champions against John Cena, but you still have not had that one defining match that will forever solidify and legitimize your career, CM Punk. And, of course, Mick Foley is talking about hell in a cell as he brought up the names of other wrestlers that went through there and basically cemented their legacy in WWE history. Names such as The Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, even the hardcore legend himself, and then Edge. And CM Punk, he feels that he does not need to do that type of a match as Mick Foley would actually reveal that he's acting on behalf of AJ Lee as coming just later tonight will be John Cena to address his latest injury. For those that might have missed it, John Cena, he had went to go see the famous Dr. James Andrews to go get some surgery done to his elbows. He had needed to have some chips be removed and it said that John Cena is going to be out of action for the next few weeks. Well, John Cena would address the WWE Universe and let them know just what the prognosis is when he'll be coming back. Mick Foley tells CM Punk, hey, John Cena is probably going to challenge you to a match at Hell in a Cell. Hopefully you do the right thing, and you accept this match, not just for... Me, not just for yourself, but for the WWE Universe. And, of course, that segment would come later on as we would see John Cena and what I thought was a very awkward segment as we see him just going on a thank you salute to everybody in the WWE, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, and just felt like he was killing some time is basically where I'm getting at here. And then we finally see CM Punk come out with Paul Heyman. And uh, from there, <laughs> the action really had picked up as we had saw CM Punk 
say to John Cena that he does not want to face him at Hell in a Cell because he is aware of what all he will do to John Cena at the pay-per-view as he will injure him so bad that it's just not going to be funny. And he actually tries to give friendly advice to John Cena, which was to leave his ring if he knew what was good for him. Otherwise, he would beat him down so bad he would need at least eight months of rehab just to come back to the WWE. CM Punk, biggest mistake he makes, he turns his back, as well as Paul Heyman. They give him to the count of five to leave the ring. By the time he turns around, John Cena has a steel pipe in his hand. Heyman, I've never seen Heyman move so fast before in my life as a big man. And Heyman's a big man. He was just gone, just like that. Uh, but the WWE champion, he was not as lucky as CM Punk was able to connect that steel pipe to the ab area of the WWE champion. And John Cena would say, real men wear pink, and that's what I call a pipe bomb. As we see the WWE champion just haul off to the backstage area, just when you think Raw is over, because it felt like it was over at this point. I know there were a lot of you that were eagerly anticipating flipping that channel to get back to that Green Bay back, uh, Packers Seahawk game. Well, guess what? We got bonus footage within the last few seconds here. We see the WWE champion in a backstage segment, and he crosses paths with Mick Foley. Mick Foley is back still turned to the WWE champion. We see CM Punk attack. Mick Foley from behind, and then he walks on about his business, but then he decides he wants to go back for seconds. And what is the last image that we see, folks? For those of you that watched it, you know, we see CM Punk standing there just looking scared shitless as the person just a few feet away from him is none other than Right back. And you're just saying to yourself, WTF, what the hell is going on right here? What in the hell is WWE thinking? I can only imagine how many people had sat up as soon as they saw this segment and they put those ridiculous articles out there and they said, Is Ryback the next WWE champion? Ryback, future WWE champion? Let me tell you something here. And I just lo I loved it. I was just, I actually made a bet with Zed. I said $50 says that we won't see at least 10 articles within the next 30 minutes online asking if Ryback is going to be the next WWE champion. And I got my money, I'm happy to say, so I doubled that. So, mm, Red Lobster for me this weekend. I was just amazed at how many people sat up and they're like, oh, Ryback, future champion. <laughs> And I'm saying to myself, no, 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 no. Ryback is not going to be a future WWE champion. I'm saying to myself, okay, let's just wait and let's just see what is going to happen. Now, let me just, before I update you all on this whole latest Ryback development, let me just go and tell you guys initially what I was thinking when I saw this. I said, hell no. Hell no. What's going on here? Who all are injured? Why is Ryback even having this moment with CM Punk? This makes no freaking sense to me. And I was mad for like at least 20 minutes because I'm saying to myself, no, Ryback is not ready. Yes, he may have the Feed Me chance going on. He may have his cool little logo shirt. He may have that whole badass music going on. Wrestling-wise, I really have not seen enough from him. I really have not seen him work with enough veteran wrestlers that could really solidify in my mind that, okay, he's definitely ready for the big times. I have yet to see him work a two- or three-month program with someone of the likes of The Miz with a Dolph Ziggler with a Kofi Kingston 
with a Seamus, with a Wade Barrett, with Kane, with Big Show. I have yet to see him work with the likes of Brodus Clay. I haven't seen him work an extended program with any of these guys that I've mentioned. I've just seen him do a bunch of one-offs. And the one time I do see him involved in some type of a mini program, it's with Jinder Mahal, but that thing doesn't even make it to a damn pay-per-view. It ends after like three weeks just as it was starting to get some type of momentum under it. So I'm seeing this segment, and I'm saying to myself, what the hell is WWE smoking tonight? But then after I calm down, I say, you know what? Let me just kick back here, and let me just wait 24 hours. I'm sure there is a legitimate reason why we saw this segment with Ryback. And this is where I had to put my booking and my writing skills to test. I'm saying to myself, okay, what is going on here? Why is Ryback in this segment with the WWE champion. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and it took me about 15 minutes to think about this. For others, it might have came instantly, but for me it took 15 minutes, and I said, you know what? It's highly likely that John Cena might not be able to make it at Hell in a Cell. Maybe this is WWE's way of letting us know that if it's not going to be Cena that's going to take on CM Punk, maybe it's going to be Ryback. So I'm saying to myself, okay, so we could possibly see Ryback take on the WWE champion. Could the belt be on the line? I don't know. If it were to be on the line, Punk would definitely retain. But I'm saying to myself, could we see the two of these guys have have a match within the next coming weeks if Cena's not going to be able to make it? So I just marinate on that, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, Maybe that's what's going on here. As we would find out, and we were staying on top of the story throughout the day, we find all the way up until we get ready to come on live tonight that, yes, in fact, WWE, they were not trying to even have there be a match between CM Punk and Ryback. They're just giving that idea out there to us that this is possibly something that could happen later down the road, while also bringing up the fact that it's possible Cena might not be at Hell in a Cell. So you're kind of looking at this, and you're kind of saying to yourself, okay, so Cena possibly could not be at Hell in a Cell. Now, does that give Ryback the right to have that spot? No. No. In my opinion, it does not give him the right. Honestly, if it's that shaken up right now, if Cena is not going to be able to make it, then I think what you do is you have somebody slide on in there and you have them work that program with CM Punk until John Cena can come back. Now, here is how I would book it. I don't like this guy. I'm tired of seeing him. Okay, but I would buy him more than Ryback right now, and that is I would rather see Big Show take on CM Punk at Hell in a Cell if Ryback is uh, correction if John Cena is not going to be able to do the match. Bump Ryback, you go with the Big Show. If you can't go with Big Show then what's going on with Mark Henry? Mark Henry, he should definitely be ready to go right now. If not, I don't know when, but I'm saying to myself, no. Under no circumstances do you go with Ryback. The guy just is not ready. And I just love how WWE, they do not even really mention the fact that this guy used to be a former member of Nexus. They are trying to act as if his previous in-ring persona never existed, and I'm just saying to myself, okay, am I the only one that remembers him from Nexus? Am I the only one that remembers him having that stupid little hillbilly gimmick that he had going on just right before he had joined the Nexus? I'm like, what the heck is going on here? It's freaking ridiculous, but definitely for you guys that were looking at that and you're saying to yourselves, what the hell is going on with Ryback here? Just Keep cool. Just take it easy. Just rest knowing that 
this just an idea that WWE was flirting with, just something that they wanted to have fans talk about. They wanted to get a reaction. But if you ask me honestly, Ryback is not ready. I truly, 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 I can put money on it. Ryback is not going to be no WWE champion this calendar year. He's got a long, long ways to go before he can even look at that belt. But there you have it right there. I definitely wanted to take that time out, let you guys know what was up with Ryback. I definitely want to know what you all have to say when we get ready to open up the phone lines in a little bit. But, you know, overall, I definitely thought that this past Monday night's Raw was definitely a very good show. I mean, it was a very strong opener. I love the first two segments where we had Paul Heyman, CM Punk, AJ Lee. That was definitely very solid right there. And then you followed that up with that strong contest between Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston. I just love that one-two punch right there. I love that third punch that had came in with Mick Foley, CM Punk. I love the knockout punch that they gave us that just had us all talking and saying, what the fuck, when Raw was about to go off the air as we had saw CM Punk staring off with Ryback. I definitely loved all that. Definitely a very solid episode. It actually gave you a lot to talk about, including what all was happening with Kane, Daniel Bryan, the latest development in the tag team division. Definitely was a lot to take away from that, as Raw seems to be finding that right little niche now. Now that it's extended three hours, definitely was a very enjoyable episode. It's really kind of disappointing when you think about it, because... Ratings-wise, they didn't exactly do too good. Now, we haven't got the official numbers yet for this past Monday Night's Raw, but from what we're able to gather so far, because of that Monday Night Football game, which did like about 16-point-something, I think it had like a 16-point-something rating with just a boatload of million viewers, Raw did like pretty poorly this week in the ratings. I'm hearing that it's like the worst rating to date since it's been three hours so far. Of course, we're going to try to double-check that, confirm. As soon as we get the official numbers, we'll definitely share it with you all. But nonetheless, it was still a definite solid episode this past Monday night. So that's pretty much going to do it right there. So we're going to go on ahead. We're going to take a brief commercial break. And then when we come right back, We're going to let you guys know. Oh, yeah, thank you. That, like, I almost forgot about that. Um, I had the lovely co-producer Tammy slip me a note, and she said, What about the Divas division? I said, Oh, that did happen, didn't it? You know, that was like an overthought. But in a nutshell, we had Eve that had uh, teamed up with, who was it there? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here, folks. She teamed up with Beth Phoenix to take on Alicia Fox and uh, I believe it was Layla and Eve, Beth Phoenix, they won. But post-match, we saw the return of Caitlyn, and Caitlyn had revealed that she somewhat has an idea of who attacked her. And uh, we saw Eve kind of get a little scared there as she's kind of thinking, oh, man, is her cover blown? Well, Caitlyn would reveal that the person that had attacked her had blonde hair. And so we see Eve looking at Beth Phoenix, and Beth is the only one with blonde hair in the ring right here. She's saying to herself, no, it wasn't me. Don't believe what you're hearing. It's not true. We see Eve attack Beth Phoenix pretty much from behind, left her laying out on the mat. You're kind of saying to yourself, whoa, what the heck is going on here? Uh, You know, I'll get into that. On Saturday's episode I don't really want to go into it right now Because I definitely wanted this episode To be a bit short tonight But you definitely want to check out The Saturday edition of our Weekend Report Because I definitely will be highlighting this A little bit more And in the meantime There's an article that i like for you guys To check out until we get ready to bring up What had happened with Eve There in that segment there's an article that we have up at our website at infinity com. Yours truly, I had wrote this awesome piece asking the question, is Eve possibly 
the savior of the Divas division, and I give a very good argument why I feel that is. You definitely will appreciate it. It's a really good read. If you haven't taken the time to read it, check it out. You'll definitely like it, and uh, that will definitely tie you over until we touch more upon that on Saturday's show. All right, so we're going to go on ahead and we're going to take a brief commercial break. Then when we come right back, I'm going to let you guys know about this special contest that we got going on where you're going to be able to win a copy of WWE 13 for your respected platform. We'll also go ahead and open up the phone lines. We'll wrap up the show. So go ahead. We're going to take that commercial break right now. And then when we come right back, we're going to jump right into it. So kick back, relax. You're listening to the RCWR show on September 26th. It's now Wednesday. Very good morning to you all on the East Coast. We'll be coming right back, folks. Do hang tight. Tired of those wrestling websites that give you redirects, spyware, weird pop-ups? How about those misleading headlines? Instead of hitting the keyboard in frustration, why not visit InfinityOneProductions.com? Infinity One is the source for wrestling-related news and so much more without all the hassle. Visit InfinityOneProductions.com. Your keyboard will thank you. Hey guys, Lee Sanders here with the RCWR Show, and I'd like to take this time out to tell you about one or two quick apps that I think you should check out when you get a free moment. First app I'd like to recommend to you is an app from Stitcher. Now, Stitcher allows you to be able to play all our episodes of the RCWR Show and Impact Showdown on your portable devices, such as an Android phone, Kindle Fire, iPad, you name it, it'll be able to play it. So definitely highly recommend that you check that out. It's available for free in the App Store. Stitcher, new and smart way to play radio. Also, another cool app that I'd like to recommend to you all is a new app that had came out not too long ago from Apple. That's right. Apple has recently come out with a free podcast app. Now, this app is really cool, folks, because after we are done doing our shows, all you have to do is just subscribe to our episodes. And you can do this by downloading this new free podcast app. All you have to do, visit the App Store on your iPhone or iPad and just search podcast. Once the app is downloaded, you can then type in the name of our shows, the RCWR Show and Impact Showdown, and you'll be able to subscribe. It's that easy. So you have two cool free apps that you can check out and take all our episodes with you on the go. So get to it already. to the Tuesday Night Wrestling Report edition of the RCWR Show. We're now bleeding into Wednesday morning, so a very good morning to you all that are on the East Coast right now. If it's still Tuesday for those of you at your neck of the woods, hey, how you doing? (laughs) All right, so let me tell you about this really cool special contest that we got going on before we go off the air, and I know, lovely Tammy, you were slipping me a little note. You said, hey... Dave said he hasn't got his copy of the Rock and Cena DVD yet. Yeah, for those of you that are like, huh, Rock and Cena DVD? We had a really cool prize giveaway on our Night of Champions post show. Where were you? You missed it if you didn't get in on the deal as we had picked two random loyal listeners and they had won a copy of Rock versus Cena, and it was pretty awesome. And I know Dave had a question in the chat room there. He's like, I haven't gotten my DVD yet. Well, if you had saw on Facebook, we had the picture of 
two copies of Rock vs. Cena. And if you did not see that picture, you can actually go check it out right now. It should be the only pic that we loaded up onto Twitter and had a nice little caption right up under it. The DVDs, they're bought. They are ready to be shipped and ready to go. I just need the free time to be able to ship them out. So I'm hoping between myself, co-producer Tammy, one of us can try to ship it out. If not, maybe Wednesday, then definitely Friday we'll ship it out. And the best part about this is you guys are going to get tracking confirmed so that you're able to track those packages right on up till it comes to your doorstep. So just, you know, bear with us for a little bit while we're trying to get it shipped off to you. Hey, it's free. You can't really complain because you didn't put any money out there. It's You know, those DVDs, by the way, that came out of my pocket, co-producer Tammy's pocket, Zed's pocket. It's our way collectively of just giving back to our loyal listeners and just letting you guys know we appreciate you all checking out the episodes. Which brings me to this special little contest that we're going to be doing. Now, we officially announced it on Saturday, but I don't really think y'all had quite got the memo yet. So we're going to be mentioning it all the way up until our 100th episode coming up on October 23rd. Now, this contest, pretty much in a nutshell, you'll be able to get a copy of WWE 13 for your respected platform. Here's how it works. Here's how you enter. All you got to do is go to our website at infinity1productions.com. We have a donate tab that's towards the bottom on the right-hand side, so it would be on your respected right-hand side of the computer screen. You click that, you follow the information, you donate your dollar, you're automatically in the contest. You can also go about it by going on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show. Scroll down to the gray extras tab button. Click it. You'll see the donate button. Click on it and follow the instructions from there. One dollar gets you in. We'll pick the winner on our 100th episode coming up October 23rd. And that's a limited edition copy of WWE 13 that you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting that Stone Cold Austin 316 limited edition. Okay, so if you happen to have it for the PlayStation 3, we're definitely going to try to do our best to make sure that you get that one copy there where you get a Stone Cold DVD. But if we're not able to secure that, we'll definitely still hook you up with that limited edition copy. So really cool little contest right here. And the best part about all this is... We're going to get a grand total of the amount that everybody has donated. And whatever that amount is, we personally, we being me, co-producer Tammy, Zed, we're going to take our own personal money and we're going to double that money that you all donate. And we're actually going to make a payment to the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, as of course next month is Cancer Awareness Month, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so this is really our way of giving back to the community and just really doing something really cool. So best part about all this is even if you don't win a copy, hey, at least you can rest knowing that your money is going to be going towards something very noteworthy. And I think that's what makes it all even more worthwhile and the best part about it like the two rock versus cena dvds that we gave away to our winners this copy of wwe 13 it is not going to be purchased through the donation money that you all give to us we're actually buying the wwe 13 video game out of our own pockets for you guys so just Definitely, we just wanted to clear that up just in case somebody's like, hmm, this sounds a little fishy. Well, now I get that little crap out the way right now. We are not Don Marie, okay? (laughs) So other than that, let's go on ahead right now and let's open up the phone lines, and then that's pretty much going to be it. We'll wrap it up for tonight. So let's go ahead and let's go right now to lovely Tammy. Who we got on the switchboards tonight? Who, who, Who we taking? 
We're going to go there. Okay, all right, well, let's go there. All right, so we're going to go with the 240 area code. You're live on the air, my friend. Hey, how you doing? Hey, pretty good. What's your name? Where are you calling uh, from? Uh, Jason, calling from Hyattsville, Maryland. Oh, Jason, Hyattsville, Maryland. How are you doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. First time mm-hmm. listening. All right, good. Well, hope you like the show so far. I do. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So, we um, have a question? Go ahead. Like, everything that's going on, like, dealing with the, I guess, the wrestling thing with um, CM Punk, and I know everything is pretty much scripted and, and stuff is not, I I don't know if he, if he, if that's probably him or just uh, this whole script and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I've I've been a fan of his like before he even came to WWE. I followed him through uh, Ring of Honor and uh, even when he was in a, a TNA. Mm-hmm. I was actually surprised that he made it to the WWE. I thought they were going to uh, try to like uh, uh, water him down or something or try to change him, but uh, mm-hmm. he's pretty much been, I guess, stayed the same ever since. Mm-hmm. But um, I like that he's holding the title, and um, I understand what what the character is coming from because it's always uh, revolved around Cena having the title so long, and I'm uh, I'm one of the I'm one of those people who think that somebody new should hold the title. Mm-hmm. When you're tired of seeing the you know seeing the same person hold the title the whole time you you, you want to see something something new. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know why they would even put uh, have Ryback standing there. I hope they don't try to give him no title shot because he's completely not ready. He hasn't really beat any well-known people right. except for the Miz and and that's pretty much it, but I look at Miz pretty uh, when he when Miz first came in um, nobody really liked him. I, I didn't like him. But after I got to know, you know his story and, you know, what he went through and how he paid his dues, I, I actually gained some uh, some uh, respect for him. Right. I actually gained, I, I gained some respect for the Miz because of everything that he went through. I feel that he paid his dues. But his whole his whole character is like, is like I just don't like him. But... I feel that a lot of other. I look at a lot of other the uh, the guys who are in the mid card. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't think I can see them wearing the world title belt. Like uh, Kofi, like uh, Kofi Kingston. I, I don't. I, not probably not in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. Maybe year years years down the line. But he, like you had said, he's somewhat like uh, Shelton Benjamin. But he just haven't. You know, really, he has all the tools. But he just like when it's given to him, he really doesn't show off. Right. As for Dolph Ziggler, um, that that the world title thing that he had, the the world championship that he had got from Edge, I I don't even count that. I I don't even know how they say he's a former world champion when he really didn't win that. Right. And um. I don't know when they're going to, you know, let him uh, cash in that briefcase because mm. I, I don't think that um, they're going to let two people un, unsuccessfully cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase. But I don't uh, Dolph is there. He can, he can put on a five-star match, but he still needs to, you know, get over that hump. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like letting like Big Show came in. Uh, he just he last time I we see seen Big Show was when uh, was it the match between CM Punk and and John Cena and all them was together. Yeah. And and now that was the last time you seen Big Show. And he he just shows up and punches Ten Side and goes at the uh, Brodus and, and then that's it. He just walks out. He's, Big Show is just one of them. One of those guys that just needs to, like, he just needs to, like, just hang it up because you really, 
you you've done pretty much like everything that you already done. You I don't know if he's been WWE champion or whatever. I know he's been a world champion. He's been the ECW champion. He's pretty much done everything that there is to do. He can retire and, and do whatever. Yeah, he he has held the uh the WWE champ, uh championship before. He's uh one of the few Grand Slam champions that's still current on the roster there. Mhm. So yeah, he have he has done it all. Uh, he um and I look at WWE as a as a product when it comes mm-hmm. to wrestling. Mm-hmm. I say that on a wrestling standpoint, I think TNA has them beat when it comes to putting on matches and everything. But WWE has the the money and the resources to tell a story and to travel and do everything else. But mm-hmm. TNA, they have the, the wrestlers that can put on five star matches and everything because mm-hmm. of who they're run by. They, w what's it say? Uh, TNA is pretty much what WCW used to be and how ECW was. They're doing pretty much what there's. If you really look at it, they're doing like the uh it's like the attitude era, uh WCW and and all those stuff is like rolled into one. But they the the thing that's holding T N A back, they need that um that billionaire type person to take them to that next level. They need to venture out and go to other places. Hey, and I'm sorry about that, Jason. We definitely appreciate you calling into the show there. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm just getting a heads up from the lovely cool producer Tammy that, you know, we got other callers that we got to get to. And I couldn't help but notice you had made the reference there to TNA. Now, TNA, that's an entirely different other topic, and we actually have a show for that. I know you're a first-time listener, and you say you had liked the show. Definitely keep checking it out there. And you definitely would love to know here that we have a Thursday night show called Impact Showdown Radio. It comes on immediately after TNA Impact Wrestling goes off. You can catch that Thursday nights, 10 o'clock p.m., right here, same way that you're accessing tonight's show. And we talk everything TNA-related. We try to just let it be about WWE. You definitely got some very valid points, though, with regards to what you're seeing in TNA. I definitely would like for you to I welcome you personally. Call into the Thursday night show. Bring up those topics that you were talking about with TNA. And I definitely, you know, because you definitely are on to something there. I like everything that you had said. Now, with regards to WWE putting on better matches than TNA, I won't say that's every single time. You know, if you watch both shows respectively on a weekly basis, you kind of know that there's actually some weeks there where you're looking at TNA and you kind of say, hmm, well, the presentation here is better than what I had saw from Monday night. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, I think one of the things that we kind of need to get out of the picture there to compare Impact Wrestling, I will say this, to compare Impact Wrestling, which airs on Thursday nights, to a Monday night show to Raw, you know, Raw is just really out there. It's its own entity. Nobody will probably ever come close to touching it. I don't really think it's fair to, a lot of times, compare Impact Wrestling to Raw. One could kind of maybe say, okay, well, you know what, let's compare SmackDown to Impact since both of those pretty much just come up right behind each other a day apart. And then they both have the same type of format. They both are two-hour shows. You know, I know we got some TNA fans. They say, hey, let's make TNA Wrestling a three-hour show. I really don't know if they have what it takes to make it to a three-hour format right now, not with everything that's currently happening. But there's actually some weeks where TNA will put up a really good show and you're looking at what had happened off of a Raw or a SmackDown, and you're kind of saying to yourself, okay, you know what, this was definitely better this week for this show. I think if you go back and you look at what had happened with SmackDown, with it being the whole Daniel Bryan Kane show, you compare that episode to the open Fight Night edition of Impact Wrestling, 
where Hulk Hogan pretty much dominated throughout the night as he's hunting for Joseph Park, trying to find out what happens to his little buddy. As turns out, Aces and Eights had him, and he's doing his own little Miami Vice, Sonny Crockett thing. You're kind of saying to yourself, man, both of these two shows, they went a bit overkill because they just crammed us with all these segments revolving around these guys. Was it a decent show? Yeah, but they had went a little bit overkill. That's one example right there of maybe how you can kind of compare two different shows. But we could sit up and we could talk about that for hours. But, you know, we'll bring that back up on Thursday night's Impact Showdown already. I'll definitely make sure we make it be a deluxe edition. We definitely want to try to get all you all's reactions. All right, we got about five minutes left. And unfortunately, I hate when that happens because that means we got to pretty much run right through some stuff. So let me figure out how I'm going to do this. Because co-producer Tammy, I see we got a couple of more people on hold here. What are we going to do? Well, you tell me what to do because I, I don't really want to go right into it and then we get cut off because I'm not really trying to do overtime tonight. What are we doing? Yeah? Okay. All right. All right. We'll do that then. We'll do that then. Okay. So it's always nice to get a new caller in here. We're just going to go on ahead and we're going to wrap up the show. I'm going to let you guys know what all we're going to be doing for Thursday night's Impact Showdown Radio, and I'm also going to let you guys know what we're going to be doing for the Saturday edition of the RCWR Show Weekend Report. So, of course, Impact Showdown Radio, that's this Thursday. Get you guys caught up on the latest fallout from TNA Wrestling. You definitely want to check out that episode because we are now hearing from very reliable sources that Devon Dudley is going to be popping up on Impact Wrestling to defend the television title against three, possibly, not three, uh, is going to be against one of the winners from some type of a tournament. I believe it's either going to be a three or a four-man type of match, but whoever wins that is apparently going to be taking on Devon. Very limited information right now, but that's pretty much what we know in a nutshell. We don't know who the participants are just yet, but one thing's for certain, he's going to drop the strap to whoever this person is because, remember, he's not under a TNA contract right now. And, of course, Hulk Hogan is going to be visiting those damn Aces and Eights home turf. That should definitely be a very solid episode. Definitely want to check it out. We'll cover the fallout. We'll definitely get you all's reactions. It's going to be a deluxe episode where basically I just want to kick back and I want to hear what you all got to say. So definitely check that out. This Saturday, we got a pretty awesome episode of the RCWR Show Weekend Report. We're going to get you guys caught up on the very latest in wrestling-related news, entertainment news, so much more. You definitely want to check it out. I'm going to have a review of the Blu-ray edition copy of The Avengers as, yeah, The Avengers had just came out on DVD If you have not checked out the DVD yet, you're a little bit on the fence, you definitely want to check that out. I'll have a review. I'll let you know about the bonus content that's on there, all that good stuff. You definitely want to check it out. We're also going to have a review of Green Day's new album called Uno, so you definitely want to check that out. It's definitely going to be a pretty solid jam pack episode. You'll be able to check that out this Saturday, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern right here on blogtalkradio.com and over at our sister website at infinity com. That's pretty much going to do it, but the wrestling news does not stop here. Be sure to check out our website. Hit us up on Twitter at infinity one prod Facebook at infinity one productions. Also subscribe to us in the iTunes, Zoom marketplaces, Stitcher as well. Keywords, the RCWR show. For everybody in the chat room, very active chat room today. I loved it. We definitely got to do this again Thursday night. For our new caller, Jason, from the Highsville, Maryland area, definitely represent, bro, because we're over here in the Maryland area ourselves. Do stay in touch. We love hearing from new fans. Definitely appreciate it. Great show tonight. I'm the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. You all be safe and you all be kind to one another, folks. We'll see you this Thursday night. We'll be talking TNA Wrestling on Impact Showdown Radio. Y'all take care. Be safe. Be kind to one another.